This is the Negro Ninja. And we have established that the dating game is basically war between man and bitch. All right. And you know they say they take no prisoners in war, but holes take as many prisoners as they can get in war. Okay, they don't just want to kill you. Okay, they want to use you for something. Okay, now you either going to capture a hoe or a hoe is going to capture you. Many niggas is capture many niggas in, the, in that friend zone. All right, because it's always a battle of the mind with these hoes. Okay, and I'm the first to tell you that game does not work. But remember, when I say game, it's for the lack of a better term. Okay, meaning, oh, you know how to talk to women, you, you know, not being boring and etc. Okay, but the game that everybody else is talking about is more or less like deception. Okay, then that's basically what it is. It's manipulation. All right. And and it's like somebody told me a long time ago. Okay, you got to get these bitches mind. You lose your mind, you lose your whole. Okay, that's why the whole gets into your mind. To keep you on her, to keep you Hold up, to keep um, herself on your mind. Okay. Try to trick you into thinking that something's actually going to happen in the future. That you might be soulmates. Okay, don't cut me off. Keep me in the back of here. So she can just come back in and just steal whatever loot she can and just disappear into the darkness again. Okay, just disappear into the makeup. And just a powder cloud of makeup. Oh, it's vanish, and your pockets is lighter. Okay, and your time is wasted. What the hell? It was like twelve o'clock a second ago. Now it's like five o'clock in the morning. Okay, now the dating game is basically um, good for niggas that can out bitch your bitch. Okay, and I have a Reddit story to prove this. Let's listen. Found out last night. Hold up. I, 32 female, found out last night that my husband, 37 male, stalked and manipulated me into a relationship. Hi all, I am not sure to even start. I am not a regular Redditor, but I do sometimes browse the site when bored. I looked online to see if I could find any information regarding my issue. Well, at least not anything anything helpful. Never though I'd be making this kind of post. But here I am. Apologies if this gets long. I haven't really been able to gather my thoughts. Background. So I 32 female met my now husband 37 male, who I'll call Dave not his real name about 5 years ago. We have been married for 2 and a half years now. We have an adorable 20 month old daughter, and I am currently 4 months pregnant. We just bought a house a couple of years ago, in the suburbs outside of a larger metropolitan area. Okay, now this bitch is basically telling you the prison that she's in right now. Okay, to the niggas looking outside, what are you talking about? That's not a prison, this bitch is living the life that most hoes wish they could have. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, you're gonna see that this is a prison later on. Okay, let's listen. Dave was an acquaintance of a co-worker Mark, so about five years ago I started to see him frequently at the bar we'd go get drinks at after work. I'll admit that at first I wasn't particularly attracted to him. Not that he's ugly, he just wasn't the type I was into at that point in my life. And you know how holes are, it's very difficult to get through to a hole. Okay, it don't matter how you look, if you ain't her type, you ain't her type. Okay, and it can be very um, mind-wrecking to see that you're not a bitch's type and her type is a dusty motherfucker or just, you know somebody that just looks significantly worse than you or in etc okay oh you like that fat nigga well he's my type okay and she's gonna show you just how shallow the mind of a bitch really is as she continues anyway when dave started coming around he would after a while try to chit chat with me it was obvious he was interested but i tried to decline his advances as gently as i could he was persistent as gently as I could. Okay, bitch, that means you didn't give no definitive answer. Okay, like if you if the chick like a chick can just find out dish you nasty like they usually do sometimes. I'm not interested. They can make themselves not seen by you. A chick can do that. You'll never see that hoe again if she don't want you to see her. So she was basically just playing with this nigga, thinking she could just stream him along. Okay. She playing with the monster, she couldn't handle the monster as you're gonna see. And one night after maybe one drink too many. I agreed to go on a date with him. I remember the date started out a bit awkward. As our previous encounters had always been within a group. So it was the first time it was just the two of us. Plus, I admit I didn't really want to be there. I had actually considered canceling. But I... Okay. 
And she just figured, you know what? Fucking, I ain't got nothing better to do. Okay, now, hoes like demons anyway, but you don't play with demons. Okay, you do not play with demons because the demon will get you because you're playing their game. You cannot out evil something that is, you know, more evil than you. But she didn't know how evil he is. Anyway. I was having really bad luck dating at that point. More on that later. So I decided that since I had no other plans, why not? Anyway, the date started out slow. And it was mostly Dave talking for the first half. But then after a while he started bringing up some topics that I was interested in a hobby. And a particular cause which I felt strongly about. Okay, so he doing the classic make it about her thing. Okay, doing it to a T. Perfect. The second half of the date was much better. And I was kind of surprised to learn that Dave and I actually had some things in common. Okay, now once again, holes want to be fed. Okay, and that's what she's getting. And she's getting too much. Okay, and the bitch is getting too fat to move. Okay. I was still hesitant, but decided to give Dave a chance. And although he definitely liked me a lot more than I like him in the beginning, our relationship slowly began to grow. Okay, once again, bitch is too fat to move. Okay. That's how people get you. They got to feed your ego. Just play with you. You're the, you're the main character. You're the star. Okay, there's nobody more important than you. All right, and this is why narcissists do so well in the dating game. This dating game is for narcissists. Okay. And eventually I fell in love with him. Since then, I would say that we have had a really good relationship. Now, you, you know what? Let's listen. He is my best friend, an excellent father, and a great husband. Furthermore, he is a good provider as well. Once our daughter was born, we decided that it made the most financial sense for me to quit my job and stay home. Okay, now this is the first part of the prison. Okay, he's breaking his hole gently. Okay, you know, we got a daughter. You know, it makes more sense for you to stay home and let me take care of all the bills. Okay, and of course a bitch is going to agree because every bitch want to be lazy. They think it's the nigga's job to just be the provider. Okay, remember, the a, a dude being a provider is not even biblical. Okay, can you point out in the Bible to where it says a man is the provider? Because I have read the Bible, okay, and I don't remember seeing it in there. Okay, did you see a man as a provider in Genesis? No, you just heard that he rules over his wife and she's the helpmate. So let's continue. It was a role that I admittedly was not 100% on board with in the beginning. But when we looked at the numbers, it was just the most logical decision. Got him. Okay, I wish I had that Chappelle sound clip. Gotcha, bitch! Despite my initial hesitancy, I have since grown to love it. I honestly couldn't have... Okay, bitch said that she has grown to love it. That's how the bitch's mind work. Okay, they don't have to love nobody. That's, that's how they get you. Like, when they love you, they can find every reason to hate you. When they don't love you, they can find every reason to love you. Hmm, and that is mind of bitch. Continuing. Imagine having to spend so much time away from my daughter. But I recognize that because of my husband, we are in a very fortunate position to do so. I know that many families cannot live off of just one income. All right, let's see what else he said to really get into that bitch's head or the psychology of why she is um, broken right here. I couldn't imagine having to spend so much time away from my daughter. Okay, that's how they get you. Okay, you, 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 your daughter. Okay, selfish. I don't want to give away too much personal information, so I'll only say that my husband works in IT. We are not rich by any stretch of the imagination, but we are able to live a modest, middle-class lifestyle on just my husband's income, except for the rare couple's fight. Things between my husband and I have generally been really good. We get along well, and up until last night I would have said that my life is ideal. The issue, like many people, my husband has been working at home since the whole coronavirus mess started. It took a little bit of adjustment, but it hasn't been too bad. As my husband works in IT, his work hasn't been disrupted too much by having to work remotely. I think the change in environment has been the biggest issue. To stay connected, my husband has been meeting virtually once or twice a week with friends or co-workers. Last night he was playing games with his little brother, Tom 30 male, and a couple of his friends. While playing these games, my husband had a few beers. He rarely drinks, but since the lockdown, he has been having two, three beers usually on Friday nights when meeting virtually. This okay, now here's the build up. Okay, lockdown. 
has shown many people the truth about many things in their relationship. A lot of people have discovered that they don't even like each other until they had to sit down and stay around each other for 24 hours. That just goes to show you how fake relationships are in general. Okay, and also just prove, and I'm pretty sure this is coming from the females part right here. Because the whole is attracted to the lifestyle. Let's go out and date. Let's go out to the movies. Let's go out and. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. They're attracted to getting out their house and living somebody else's lifestyle. Now you bitches got to stay in the house. And God showed you. Okay. Just like all them old um, coronavirus videos I was making last year. They proven the, these points. This is not a problem in my opinion. And I only mention it because he does not have much of a tolerance for alcohol. This is relevant because last night he had more than his usual two, three beers. So after I put our daughter to bed, I checked my cell phone to see that I had a message from Tom's girlfriend they've been dating for about a year and a half now. And since they only live about an hour away, we frequently double date. I like Tom and his girlfriend. So I was super excited when I opened her message to see that they were now officially engaged. It was a big group chat, so it was filled with messages of congratulations. I noticed that in one message, Tom had written big thanks to Dave. Without whose advice I would have never gotten this far. I personally thought it was very sweet seemed like. They were looking to us as an example. <laughs> I immediately ran downstairs to my husband to talk to him about it. I knew he was playing games with Tom. So he obviously must have known earlier about the engagement. I sat on the couch and we started talking about how long Tom had been planning this out. How much did the ring cost? When was the wedding? Etc. I noticed that Dave was a bit drunk. Which I guess was the result of him celebrating his little brother's next step in life. While cuddling. I mentioned to him about how what a good example he was to Tom. And this is where it all began. <laughs> okay, this is this this whole paragraph is just ironic. Okay, he's playing games with his brother Tom. And she's saying that he's a good example for him. Hmm. And that's basically how hoes see the niggas that they've been dealing with. Okay, they are flat, like like you know, people been telling me, be like the last dude that she fucked. Of course, I don't try that shit because I'm the Negro Ninja. Who the fuck I look like? Trying to stoop to another nigga's level. But anyway, and that's just basically the psychology behind that. Okay, if she sucked that nigga dick once, she gonna suck this nigga's dick again. But if you pretend like you that nigga, okay, hoes like fake, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Refresh, refreshness or something. Okay, they love doing the same thing over and over, but with different scenery is basically what I'm trying to get across. Okay. They don't like nothing new because when you knew, they just start to harass you. Okay, try to break you down and make you like the last nigga. Okay, like that one African bitch I was dealing with, Loki trying to make me like a thug. I'm like, what? I'm like, you talk so much shit about niggas. Why are you trying to Loki tell me to be like one? Because she was older than me, at, you know. I was like 28 and she was 35. She thought that she can plant some stupid seeds. I'm like, bitch, you don't know who you're dealing with. Bitch, I am iron. Okay, nothing's getting planted in iron. The whole night was such a whirlwind. that I don't even remember. Everything little thing. But basically, Dave told me about how he helped Tom make his girlfriend, now fiancé, fall in love with him. I okay, so how do you make somebody fall in love with you? That right there is already just sinister sounding. sounding. Like, if you read the Bible... Okay, he loved her. She loved him. Did it say, oh, he made her fall in love? Okay, give me your give me your daughter as a wife. Okay, that's, it's just that simple. Okay, it's just quick. Okay. All that getting to know people stuff. Okay, and bullshit. All right. To, 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 to me... Getting to know somebody in many ways is just forcing some shit. Okay. But anyway. That's what he meant. And he went into this whole story, which I had never heard before, about how he got me to fall in love with him. The true story of how we met, how we fell in love, and how our relationship blossomed. Dave was clearly drunk. And I was just so shocked that all I could do was stupidly smile and act like everything was no big deal. I th okay. And proof of what I just said is you see a bitch and you like her. That right there is proof enough. Okay, that is proof enough, and I guarantee you, if you see a bitch that you like, and she just treats you correctly 24-7, and just decide, you know what, let's, you know, I'll just get with you. Why she keep treating you well, that'll easily be a woman that you marry. Tell me I'm bullshit in the comments. Tell me I'm lying. All right, continue. This just made him open up even more. The real story, according to my husband, 
is that he first found me on a dating site about half a year before we ever met. He claims that he initially sent me a message, but that I just ignored him. He looked kind of hurt when talking about this, but I told him that women get 100 SF messages a week on those sites, and there was just no way that I could read through all of them. Bullshit. Okay. Let me tell you something. On Instagram, I have talked to bitches that have like 100K. Okay. They have tons, you know, probably even more than that. And some of them will even message me back. Okay. So that's, that's a cop out. Much less respond. He claims that I did read his, but no response. He said that we ranked very highly in compatibility. And I know that he is not lying about that. Okay. I know he ain't lying. She read the shit and just didn't say nothing. Had a lot of the same interests and that he just knew we'd make the perfect couple. So apparently after this, Okay, now that's true too. Now that's crazy how the algorithm can put you with some chicks that it thinks you should talk to and she still don't do what she's supposed to do. Because I'm not going to lie to y'all. I've been complaining about Instagram. Okay, now Instagram have been suggesting that I follow bitches that seem to be up my alley. And guess what happens when I follow them? They have it set up to where nobody can message them unless they follow them or something. Okay, they, they do stuff like that. So it's the whole's fault. They so fucked up that the computer even have a hard time. Continuing. Started creating a bunch of fake profiles. He stole pictures of very attractive men from social media profiles. He said he would make minor changes so as not to be reverse searched. I never even considered that. Using these profiles, he started basically catfishing me. Over the course of a couple months, he was able to initiate conversations with me on numerous occasions with different profiles. And eventually at some point, I guess I mentioned where I worked. He said he then spent hours searching through Facebook and LinkedIn before he found my picture. Okay, this is some very psychotic stuff, but that's what hoes like. They love the creeps. Okay, you give me so much attention. The fact that a nigga would do all of that for me. Oh, okay, that's what she's low-key thinking. Okay, as she's hearing this, she didn't know what's going on, but hoes sub... They just subconsciously respond to stupid stuff like she was just responding to him more as... He was lying with the catfish and the stuff. Okay, hey, how you doing, scene? Here's a fake profile. I remember one time I made a fake profile on a, th a burner account on um on my IG. Okay, and one of these bitches actually went as far as to try to FaceTime me. I you can't make this up. Okay, they'll see. Like I said, that's how I know for a fact that holes is. Program to respond stupid to male pictures and stuff like that. Or it could just be your race or whatever. They attack you based off your race and etc. But I had no freaking picture up there and was talking shit. And I got the most engagement that I have ever got from that bitch. Insane. At that point he had my name. And started hardcore stalking me online. He had created numerous social media profiles. Some of which I accepted as friends followers. So then he was able to stalk my life. After a couple months, according to him, he started stalking me in real life. He said that he started going to hang out at the bar we always went to after work. And befriended Mark, a co-worker of mine. Mark worked in IT, like Dave. And although nice, he was socially awkward and a bit of a loner. Up this nigga basically went straight out demon on this bitch. And just started infiltrating. Kind of reminds me of these gang stalkers and just narcissists in the neighborhood in general. But let's listen was always surprised when he would join us for happy hour because he usually would just sip on his beer and not say anything. Anyway, I guess Dave started stalking Mark and became his friend somehow. So then when we'd meet for happy hour, Dave would invariably start to hang out with my group of co-workers and I. It's See, that's why it's very important to, to, um, to watch the company you keep because people should not just be able to infiltrate like that. Everybody should all like the same people and stuff. That's, like, that's one issue I have with people in general. I'm like, why y'all talking to these retarded niggas? This ain't somebody I would hang around on my own. Y'all want some other shit. Girls, so-called friends, you know, they both did stupid shit like that. Seemed to work out well. That's why I don't fuck with nobody. Because Dave was pleasant. And Mark seemed to open up a bit more when he was around. So this went on for like a month. And then Dave started trying to hit on me. Again, he's not a bad looking guy. But he just wasn't my type. After a month or two, I eventually agreed as mentioned before. I was drunk and having terrible luck in the dating game. My bad. Okay, now this here is deep. She's having terrible luck. Now, what is luck really? Okay, that is things working for you or against you. 
Okay, like, you, oh, I have bad luck with women. You think you got bad luck with women, but there's some shit going on that you're just not seeing. Okay, you having bad luck because people make you have bad luck. It's like I was saying a long time ago. And I have even gotten affirmation from God himself. Remember when I was at that warehouse, all the bitches was on me. But at the same time, how would they sit back and let the fat hoe harass me? Okay, why they got to tell everybody everything I'm doing whenever I'm flirting with them? They report to the fat hoe. Okay, hoes will make a pack on who to fuck with and who they will not fuck with for whatever reason. Okay, they principalities, just like principalities. Okay, anyway. Luck was actually Dave's fake profiles. I kept chatting with guys who I thought I would have really gotten along with. In some cases, we chatted for weeks. And then when it was time to meet, I kept getting blown off. It was a huge hit to my self-esteem. One night. And that's what hoes do, try to break you down. After waiting for over an hour for my date to show up, I finally went back to my car and just cried. I just couldn't understand it and honestly started having doubts about my... Okay, he's humbling his hole. Okay, once again, this is how society try to fuck with you. Who the fuck you think you is? Feeling a certain type of way like you too good to hang out with us and etc. You different? Okay, we're going to try to humble you. They want you to get into that state that she was in. <laughs> okay. One particularly cruel episode was after another date with one of Dave's fake profiles. I received a text message which said... And they use holes to try to make you and get you like that. Something like I didn't look as good as my pictures and was accused of catfishing him. The next week during our happy hour was when I finally agreed to go on a date with Dave. I guess he essentially tore me down so that I would feel like shit and agree to go out with him. When I asked him about all the different phone numbers, he claimed that he had bought a few burner phones. Like what the hell? But wait, it gets worse. Something I had never told Dave about was that when we first started dating, I actually was talking with someone else. I was not completely into Dave like he was into me at the beginning. So when the... Okay, now you see how deceitful she is. Like, this is hoes in general. Okay, she's talking to you. I'm not into you. I'm into somebody else. Just evil. Okay, you know they say a smile is a frown upside down. If that's not proof, I don't know what is. Okay, so to me, she's getting what she's deserving. He's doing what she's doing, but on steroids gorgeous guy began messaging me on the dating site I was using. I started chatting with him. After constantly being blown off on dates, I was very cautious when I was talking to Alex. So even though things seemed to be going well, I still kept talking to Dave as well. I wanted to be sure that Alex wasn't just another asshole before I made any decisions with Dave. So Alex and I went on our first date, which was absolutely great. Until the end, the date was off to a good start because he actually showed up, lol, and he was even more handsome in real life. I couldn't believe that someone like him was so interested in me. As I said, my self-esteem was absolutely in the gutter by now. So the date goes great. We get along. We're laughing and staring into each other's eyes. I haven't felt this kind of connection ever. I remember my, my heart fluttered. And I even butterflies in my stomach. I honestly thought it was love at first sight. Up until the end. It really was a magical night. Like something out of a movie. We had had a couple glasses of wine. But neither of us were drunk. But we were feeling good. After we got out of the bar. We started making out a bit in the parking lot behind. I just felt so good in that moment. And I really thought that finally I had found a guy who I connected with. And it had been a while since I'd been with anyone. So I lost myself a bit in the passion. And suggested that Alex come home with me. I still remember the way his face just dropped. His beautiful blue eyes just became cold as ice. And his body just tensed up. He stepped back. Said sorry. I am not into LTS and walked off. It he said I'm sorry I'm not into sluts and walked off. He gave that bitch a blue clitoris. <laughs> okay, he made that bitch's clam cold. Okay, you got some cold clam shot down there, bitch. Okay, now he has also successfully outhold a hole. I have been in a lot of situations similar to how they gaslighted her right here. You know, you think you're winning, and then it's just a dead end like that. Okay, so they playing the whole game. You got to out bitch a bitch. Okay, but once again, I'm not advocating doing it i'm just telling you what the heck is going on okay because you lower your frequency doing this and there's karma to pay they they everything seemed to be going good but you don't know the karma it was one of the most devastating moments of my life i never would have guessed something like that happening not after the night we just shared and i was honestly in shock i thought see if, if it was a nigga he probably would have committed suicide or something <laughs> it was maybe a stupid joke 
but he seriously just turned and walked away. After what felt like forever, I realized he wasn't coming back, and I swear I had a full-on breakdown. I remember that my stomach just felt like someone had punched me, then began painfully twisting it. I couldn't breath and just began full-on sobbing. I don't remember if anyone saw me or not, but no one came up to me or said anything. I cried all the tears I could, and after there was nothing left, I managed to catch my breath after a while, and finally walked home. I had... Okay, and that's how she act going through some shit like that just once. Okay, these bitches are not strong. Okay, they are not strong. She she don't know what it's like to go through shit like that. Um, more than you could count on one hand in the road. Bitches will do you like that. Very anyway. dark thoughts that night. I couldn't stop beating myself up, ruining what I thought was a once in a lifetime chance. Honestly, even during my marriage, I still frequently thought about Alex. For me, he was the one that got away. And I had blamed myself for years. I guess I should mention that the Saturday night when I went out with Alex, I had actually canceled plans with Dave when he texted me the next day to go mini golfing. Bitch. You know, how was get what they deserve? I was only too happy to go. Looking back, I seriously attached myself to Dave after that. And our so-called fairy tale love grew from then on. Now why is this all worth mentioning? Last night, while Dave was proudly telling me about all that he had done in order to be with me, he mentioned that he had even paid a guy to date me. When I inquired further. Okay, now basically what she's going through is like a concentrated version of what people do when they're harassing one person in the neighborhood. Okay, it's like I was saying, you know, you oh, I'm having bad luck. It's because they decided to make you have bad luck. When the environment love you, the hoes love you. When the environment don't like you, the hoes don't like you. Okay, like how in the hood they be trying to get you to get fat bitches and shit. I was trying to set the, the prim and proper man up with the fat bitches. But back then, you don't think about it like that. You think it's just chance. Then they made a pack. Like I said, you deal with principalities. Damn, this is a long video, but let's continue. He told me about how Alex was actually paid by Dave to go out on a date with me. The idea was to do a couple dates, then ditch me. I guess to wreck my self-esteem. I don't even know, but I was in absolute shock. Like I said, the whole plot the same way. I had never mentioned Alex to Dave. And we had only exchanged messages for a couple weeks. And then it was only one date. I didn't want Dave to know that I had been talking to other guys in the beginning. So of course I wasn't going to mention it. So that just made everything all too real. Dave seemed to have found it funny. This bitch got lost in the game. As he was telling me how he reached out and found some broke. Aspiring male model who lived in a city a couple hours away. He offered to pay this guy to set up a profile. Chat with me. Then go out on a few dates. I don't know if Alex was just desperate for cat. He using this nigga like the society used hoes to fuck with you. Now, once again, this is a story that you should take extremely seriously. So I will rewatch this video like three times or something. Or find this Reddit and listen to it yourself. I'm going to tell you the name after I'm done. Or an asshole. But either way, he agreed to the proposition. For Dave, the idea was that Alex would, after a few dates, basically start to act like an asshole. And eventually stop seeing me. For Dave. So that I could learn to appreciate what I have. Rather than chasing a fantasy. He broke that bitch down. To the foundation. Bitch you fence to appreciate what you have. Who the fuck you think you. But once again she's not a good person herself. However. Alex saw an opportunity right away when I threw myself at him. And took it. I asked him why he would do something like that. And Dave's response was that I was a. Dumb girl who was chasing guys out of her league. And oh. that I needed a reality check to see that the best guy for her was right in front of her face. Okay, now he's a psycho for doing this. <laughs> you know, but he got what he wanted. He lowered himself, lowered in her to get her. But like I said, can you see yourself going through that type of extreme to get a bitch like this? Okay, this is more or less like the equivalent of taking a pussy. Okay, he's just doing that shit metaphorically. He raped this bitch's mind. In every hole, just ramming this bitch. Uh, uh, he just in each one, just violated this hole on every level. Up today, I learned now. I think I had been smiling and generally in disbelief about the whole thing, which I think only encouraged him to keep going. But the story about Alex just horrified me. I literally had a panic attack after that. Nigga, if this was a point the nigga be gagging a bitch, she'd be having spit going down the side of her mouth and the tears dropping and shit. Have his dick in her mouth, smacking the side of her cheeks. <laughs> Having a butt plug up and everything. Uh, pissing on. He, he, this shit there is just a filthy point when you think about him. Night with Alex. 
And looking back at it now, I don't think my self-esteem confidence ever recovered. I asked Dave how much he had paid Alex, and he told me 1000.00. Now, after Dave admitted about Alex, I immediately went upstairs and went... Her self-esteem never fully recovered. He broke the bitch. Okay. Niggas was telling me to break holes down a long time ago, and I was like, uh-uh. That's, that's not what I do. Okay, I used to watch my... um. My cousin's daddy do some shit like that. He just get on the phone. They up there arguing with each other. Hang up. And I'm like, that's how y'all... Like, what the hell? Making that bitch think that she ain't shit. And she call him back and all... You know, that's just how they, you know, keep the relationship going. I just can't comprehend why anybody want to function like that. But anyway. Bad. I guess Dave had another couple beers. And passed out on the couch. I saw him this morning. And he is painfully hungover. I had only one other time in my life seen him as drunk as he was last night. And it was many years ago. I want to ask him again if it was all true what he said last night. But I know it is. He knew way too many details. He's too hungover anyway to have a coherent talk now. Okay, acting like a whole acting dumb. He can talk to her dumbass. He just don't want to. Plus, he could say that he doesn't remember anything. I don't know what to do. Or even if there is anything to do. I am horrified and absolutely shocked at what I learned. I suppose that I had overly romanticized our relationship and marriage. But now it just doesn't seem real. But, I have to admit that I am also perversely very flattered. No shit. I told you. It's like I be saying about hoes love the rapists. Okay, what type of... This is some um, Fifty Shades of Grey bullshit, but the middle class version of it. My husband is not a lazy man, but he struggles to make and keep plans. The story he told last night seems almost unbelievable. And like I said, if it wasn't for the details, I would say no way is he capable of such a thing. That a man would spend so much time and effort. Just to be with me, although creepy, also does seem a bit romantic, maybe. I don't want to bring this up to any of my friends, or family, so the internet seems to be my only option. I guess I am looking for some outside perspective on this. Also, is this normal at all? I mean, have any guys out there manipulated a situation events to an extreme degree so as to be with a girl? Ladies, do you know if you man has ever done something like this? Up until last night, I had a great, loving husband, a beautiful family, and a life that most would kill for. Technically nothing has changed, except what I now know, since everything is was, so good, do I even ever bring it up again? You see, she don't even give a fuck that she was tricked, the bitch is living a lie, that's how you know that hoes is fucked up. She is living a lie, it's, oh, you know, nothing's really changed, it's all good. Should I even bring it up again? Let a nigga be in a situation like this, this nigga be, it'll be steam coming out of his ears. Out of his nose and everything, nigga's eyes probably shoot lasers. Perhaps I should just accept that my husband wanted me so bad that he went to insane measures to make it happen and just be happy with the great life that I have. I just don't know. Maybe I should see a therapist. I just feel so lost. Nah, bitch, you need to see Jesus. Okay. Right now, I have no idea what to do. If anything, too long didn't read found out my husband had stalked and manipulated me in the beginning of the relationship. I'm telling you, man, them hoes love the rapists. Okay, and the reason why he's telling her is because where are you going to go, bitch? You ain't got no job. I'm, I'm the one doing everything. Plus, I got two kids. You know, you got two kids. Those are the, she got chains with the balls on both legs. She ain't going nowhere. Okay, everybody that I talk to that's in a marriage, all in life from the girl's perspective, when they talk to me and complaining about their husband, yeah, I got kids by him. It's the same thing. It's like he just took this to the next level. This nigga basically is a wizard. He did. This is textbook witchcraft. It's up. He didn't sit up there and have her. Well, he well actually he still did use her pictures and stuff. But this is like witchcraft is all about mind control. This is basically what he did to her. He just didn't sacrifice nothing. He didn't cut up no animals and drain their blood or nothing or whatever the fuck they be doing. Okay, he told her because bitch, what you gonna do? Okay, I, I won. Okay, and the stupid thing about all this, if a dude was in a similar situation, it still it wouldn't be nowhere near as good for him. Because a whole would trap a nigga like this and probably won't even fuck him. Okay, this right here is just proof that bitches love the bullshit. Is You know, they, they like bullshit like they like their coffee. Some like it rough. Some like it creamy. Some like it creamy with sugar. Some like it bitter with sugar. Okay, and that's all I got to say for this rent. And this has been the neat. Oh, you got to out bitch a bitch. Okay, but you know, I'm not advocating it. I do not recommend it. All right, but that's all I got to say for this, Randy. This has been the Negro Ninja bringing you your Negro message for today, Negro out.